Is it bad that like a lot of their songs just sound the same? <laughs> Are you insinuating that Creepy Nuts is the Nickelback of Japan? <laughs> I'm not saying that in Look so many this words. Look at photograph! I'm not saying that in so many <laughs> words, but since you said it, John, I won't disagree with you. Oh, Lord. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Anime Club After Dark, the podcast that delves into all things anime, manga, and otaku culture related. I'm your host, Alex, but you can call me a senpai. And joining me tonight, I have our czar of source material, John. Hello. Now, John, tonight we're going to be, it's a bit of a, a new thing for you because. I am familiar with the source material. You are not. <laughs> I know. What a reversal. <laughs> what a reversal. What a reversal. Like, I, of I don't know nothing here. about the source. I'm anime only at this. <laughs> oh, man. I don't even, there's not even a manga that I read or anything. Like, dang. Oh, but I've read the manga too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure the manga designs is what the original anime was based on, or is it the other way around? It's the. the so, for, first of all, we are going to be doing a, a spoiler cast tonight for the uh, remake of Spice and Wolf that uh, just finished up airing. Um, I guess it's the, the actual official title is Spice and Wolf Merchant Meets the Wise Wolf, um, is the title of the remake. But um, for the original anime back in 2007, 2008, it was kind of an anime original design because I think when it originally that anime originally came out, the manga hadn't started yet. Okay. Um, I I don't believe so. I don't, I don't think the manga started until I want to say 2010, but I could be wrong about that. Um, but it's kind of just an amalgamation of like the light novel design, which is this holo in the light novel right here. Uh, but just kind of like bigger ears and fluffier tail. <laughs> I. My wife has a Spice and Wolf manga that we picked up actually from. I will Japanese say bookstore. in the but... the manga adaptation of Spice and Wolf, it it has a parental like guidance thing on it, if, not without cause, because you see Holo's actual titties oh. in the manga. Uh, <laughs> Good thing because I didn't the, whip manga, out the manga then <laughs> the, the manga was actually uh, illustrated by a Dachinchi artist. Um, yeah, we're gonna be talking about the um. The Spice and Wolf remake tonight. Uh, John, I'm not even going to bury the lead. John and I are big fans of Spice and Wolf. We love <laughs> we love the story a lot. I During the entire time watching Spice and Wolf remake, I'm just like, do I really like the remake? Is it really that good or is it just because I really like Spice and Wolf? <laughs> like, <clears throat> it's one of the uh, earlier, like, so I don't buy a lot of anime merch. Um mm -hmm. Especially back in the day. I buy more nowadays than I Yeah, I was going to say, it's kind of difficult to say that with a straight face looking behind you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I used to not buy a lot of anime merch. Um, and Spice and Wolf was one of my very first, like, anime Blu-ray purchases. Like, the first things I've ever bought were Clannad Poster, Clannad Blu-ray, Black Lagoon Blu-ray, mm. and then Spice and Wolf Blu-ray. <laughs> so it was, like, literally number four of my list of anime goods. Mm -hmm. so like it's like you know you could you could call me a fan of spice and wolf considering i literally didn't buy anything else prior to these things i mean you could call me a fan too <laughs> yeah with the shirt and the mug and the poster yeah i'm wearing i'm wearing my, and the my spice and back wolf there shirt yeah and i got the uh my little holo nendoroid which always watches over every single recording we do put her back there we go Nope, don't be looking over there. You don't need to see that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, I have always been a fan of Spice and Wolf since I watched the original anime. I think I've talked about this in the podcast a long time ago. I don't think I've talked about it much recently, but it was the anime that got me back into anime. Um, I started watching anime back in the mid-90s, and for a while in the early 2000s to mid-2000s, I kind of stopped. Um not because I like hated anime or anything anymore. I just, I don't know, it lost its luster for me a little bit, but then I watched Spice and Wolf, the original anime. And it's like, okay, I'm back. <laughs> you got me. You got me back. I do have to ask you, John though. Why is Holo the perfect wife? <laughs> Cause she's like a mix of caring, uh, a mix of like fun, rambunctious, but she's also super smart. The teasing, like she's, she's everything that you would want in, a woman 
Mm. I know if you go on to like the there's a a wiki, or not a Wikipedia but like a, a a wiki for all the different dairy types out there and there's a type of dere called a hyakusu dere, which literally means teasing dere. She is the poster character for it. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like, not, not without cause. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say Hollow's like the perfect waifu, right? I, I wish she was a little bit more caring, um, mm. but she's very fun, especially when she interacts with uh, Lawrence. Like, <laughs> yes. Uh but yeah, let's let's actually let's like, let's get into this. Um, so a, as I mentioned, both John and I have watched the original anime, um, and while this is ostensibly a spoiler cast for the remake, we may refer back to it from time to time. I also may refer to the light novel, but this is primarily a spoiler cast for the first season of the uh, Spice and Wolf remake. Um, the first thing I want to ask you, John besides the question about holo is when this thing was first like announced back in 2022 were you as shocked as i was i mean i always think about reasons for why things happen right because mm -hmm. i'm just a very inquisitive guy like i was like is there a new light novel being published is did the light novel finish publishing um is there a new series like it on its way or something like that uh, and I believe for this one, it's like there is a sequel book, right? Um, yeah, there is a, a there's a there's a series of sequel light novels called Wolf and Parchment. It is uh, it takes place several years after the end of Spice and Wolf, um, and oh. they the the character the primary character in that series is used as a framing device for this this new anime. Yeah, so I had I was under the assumption that they were going to do it because they want to sell the anime of the sequel novel. Yeah. I have a feeling based on, first of all, based on the fact that they're using the sequel character as a framing device for this anime adaptation. I have to imagine that once this adaptation gets finished, we're going to get an adaptation to the sequel novels too. I would hope um, so. Like I, I, again, like I said, I, I, hope I so. originally thought that was the purpose of the anime remake. Yeah, and then like, when I literally in the first five seconds, I was like, "I knew it! I called it! <laughs> they're just they're doing this for Wolf and Parchment." Um, but yeah, uh, when this was announced back in February of 2022, that was the light novel's 15th anniversary. Okay. Um, so I mean, there there is that. Uh, but I was I'm shocked. I never thought that it was good. And when we, when it was first announced, it wasn't said whether it was going to be a remake or like a continuation of the original anime. I'm right. kind of glad they went with the remake because I feel like this much of a gap between the second and third season would be a bit much. Yeah. And you know, one of the major differences was like, so when this, when I first saw the trailer, I was just like, Ooh, I don't know about these new designs. Mm -hmm. I was just like, you know, I, I really did like the original anime designs, mm -hmm. um, but the light novel designs have grown on me to the point where I'm like, you know what? I think they, the light novel designs are better than the anime original designs because the anime, anime original designs aren't bad, mm. but at the same time, I don't think they're that great either. Like they, they haven't aged particularly well, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely does seem like a product of its time looking back on it now. Um, but yeah, the light novel... Um... Uh, illustrations are done by Ju Ayakura. I mean, they're all really, really good. Um, hell, I, I'd recommend getting the light novels just for the uh, the illustrations because they they are really they are really that good. Also, I I believe it's his illustrations in the um, EDs for the remake. I think I believe those are his illustrations that he did for the ED. I don't know for sure, but I it looks a lot like his style. Um, so I would not be. Um, surprised. So, um, this new remake uh, was produced by Passion. Um, they've had a a bit of a storied history. Um, they did Interspecies Reviewers, which is another anime I think we all loved on uh, Anime Club After Dark. Um, they also are responsible for the fourth season of High School DxD. Um, is that the one that everyone hates? I think so. I don't know. I don't know High School <laughs> DxD. I know that High School DxD was tossed between a bunch of different studios. So yeah. Um, and also, uh, just for my own sake, they also did Hinako Note, which is an anime I, I genuinely adore. <laughs> really? I do like Hinako Note. I don't know why I like it, because I, I admit that it's not that good, but I still like it. 
I thought Miracle Chan was really good, really well, really well yeah. produced. Like uh, they also they, did that one too. So I read the manga for Miracle Chan, and then I watch the anime. Um, or no, I watch. I saw clips of the anime, and then I went to go read the manga, and then I went to go watch the anime after I read the manga. Hmm. And I was just like, yeah, the designs are pretty faithful. I mean, the, the manga itself looks really good. It's drawn really well. So Passion doesn't have a problem with doing well for replicating art they certainly yeah. didn't for the um spice and wolf light novel like it looks spot yeah. on absolutely um and they did a really good job with interspecies reviewers just saying <laughs> yeah i mean the, the manga for that one i i, I get the appeal of the anime mm -hmm. but the manga itself is more technical which i liked the aspect of i wish it was a lot more technical yeah. than just like haha porn of the week guys <laughs> it was just porn of the week man I mean, it was, but it was at least entertaining. It was entertaining. Um, besides just the porn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the original anime's first season was done by Studio Imagine, um, and the second season was done by Brains Base, uh, if that uh, makes any difference to anybody. Um, this The remake was directed by Hijiri Sanpei, um, but also uh, there's a chief director who is listed on this project. It's Takeo Takahashi, who was also the director of the first two seasons, or the, the two seasons of the original Spice and Wolf anime. Um, and he's also worked with a lot of other projects with Passion, so I assume that he is employed by them now. Um, and also, we're going to talk about this maybe a couple of times during this the soundtrack with the OST was composed by Kevin Pinkin. My God. <laughs> yeah. Holy if fuck. If there was any other reason to watch Spice and Wolf other than like Spice and Wolf's just really good. And this is a remake. That's really good. Uh, mm. When Kevin Pinkin was listed as the uh, composer for the series, I was just like, yo, Kevin, let's go, dude. He just, if, keeps even winning. if you would, I feel like even if you had never heard of Spice and Wolf, that probably alone would have gotten you to watch it. I mean, he's Kevin's worked on a couple of stinkers, in my opinion, but uh, the music's but always his, good. his music has never been bad. <laughs> the music's always good, e even for the <laughs> anime that are like mid that he's worked on the music for. The music is still probably really good. I mean, I can't think of a single OST he's done that's been bad. I think um, I think it was Shinoda, and I, th I think with the anime was Tower of God, where it's like the OST of Tower of God is really good, it's just like in season two or season one. Season two had a really good OST, and I'm like. Wasn't that Kevin? Didn't Kevin do the yeah. OST? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's Kevin. I, I don't want to look it up again, but I'm pretty sure it was Kevin. I think and it that's is probably Kevin why the OST the... was so good. Yeah. I, I do believe it is Kevin Pinkin who does the OST for that. Either that it's not Evan Call. No. Because he's the other, right. like... No, that's, <laughs> that's the no, other American that's... name we recognize in credits. Yeah. <laughs> the English names, I should say, not American. Yeah. Because uh, I don't think uh, Kevin is American. He's Australian? I think he's, he's Australian, yeah. Um... But the, speaking of a name that's really, really easy to say, um, the first OP uh, for episodes 1 through 13 uh, is Tabi no Yukue, done by Hana Hope. Uh, what did you think of this one? Actually, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll just say what both of the OPs are. Cause the second half uh, OP is signed by Aimer, or Aimer, however the hell you say the name. I thought the first OP was all right. I didn't mind it. Um, I liked it certainly better than the first op that they had in the original <laughs> really the you season. don't like that the first op it's like it's okay you know it's okay i will say that this the first op kind of had a feeling of that original op though it did uh, how they stylized the op like how it's animated and stuff made me think mm. about the first op and like it elicited a feeling of it, yeah. Like, it yeah. had a lot of callbacks. So, I didn't mind it, like, animation-wise. Just song-wise, I was like, I did like it a lot more, because like, I don't think the first OP was that great. <laughs> <laughs> Which is um, a completely second... different thing, because, god damn it, signed by Eimer, Eimer, however you pronounce your name, I don't remember. Uh, just, I like, again, we, we've talked about this multiple times. But when I when I was just like, is that is that Aimer I hear? <laughs> I remember Alex, I Alex, know. wake up, bro, bro. Yeah. I remember John. John literally DM me the second the second the 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 episode fourteen premiered. He's like, Alex, Alex, you gotta check this out. It's Aimer. 
No, we were at in L.A. at the time when I was watching it. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I woke you up. You were falling asleep in bed. I'm like, Alex, Alex, wake up. Is that is that is, Ivor? Did you know about the new OP? I forgot we were in the same room when this happened. I was like two. I think I was two or three episodes behind at that point, so I didn't know but that. you were catching up because yeah, we I was had some up. spare time. And, you, <laughs> yeah. and then I'm just I'm there like half asleep. And you, Alex, wake up! You gotta see this. <laughs> it was big news to me. <laughs> and just amazing song. Yeah, it's I it, love it, her. So I much. love this. I uh, of the two ops for this remake, I definitely prefer the second one. Oh, um, this is my favorite opening for all of Spice and Wolf, old and remake. Okay, <laughs> like this is the best one. <laughs> now, now going to EDs. Now the first ED is uh, on Dante with, by Claris. It's not a bad ED, but it is no Seven Apples on a Witch's Tree. <laughs> I I like Claris, right? I love Claris. I, I really like uh, the Oyermo uh, OP, all right? I, I I think that's, like, Irony is the best Claire song. I will fight mm. anyone on that. Nexus is pretty good, too. Connect is pretty good, too. Uh, anyway, Adante was not great. Uh, I, I didn't hate it by any means, but comparing it to, like... The first ED the of first Spice ED Wolf is of Spice iconic. Wolf. Dude, seven apples on the witch's tree. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Seven seeds to plant inside, inside of me. me. <laughs> Whistling around oh, yeah. the is just iconic. I can never forget I, that. I, I will say, as, as I don't hate this song. I don't think it's as memorable as the first ED for Spice Wolf at all uh, for the original anime. But I didn't hate it. Um and obviously, this one was not co-written by Ecstasy, uh, clearly. <laughs> yeah. Um, hopefully not. Hopefully the hopefully girls in Claris are, are staying clean. <laughs> like um, The second ED, though, uh, Ringo Tokimi, um, I really liked it. Yeah, I really liked the second ED. I by thought Nariami. it was better than the first ED. <laughs> yeah. Um, and even the though, animations like, art style, cute, too. I thought art style-wise, it was kind of similar, but I like the animation better in the second ED. I mean, I like that they just made they did chibis of the characters, which was they yeah. did that in the original anyway. So they did. again, callbacks to the, like which, the original. Like there's, you can tell that Passion had a lot of Passion for this remake. Like I'm pretty sure the people who made the remake of Spice and Wolf were giant fans of the actual Spice and Wolf like original anime run. Mm -hmm. it, yes, because there's, there's no everything that they did inside of it. It just to me it seemed like they really liked the source material at at the very least and wanted to do a good job because yeah. it was just I, I loved this remake so much yes <laughs> and you know the reason i told you that i'm i don't know for sure but i think the chibi like character designs you see in the ed are done by ayakura is because in the light novels you get chibi uh illustrations from time to time and it looks a lot like them <laughs> oh they might have been because I know that uh, traditionally for a lot of anime, the EDs will have art from the light novels, like Overlord yeah. does. Um, yeah. Overlord's EDs all use... Uh, God, Overlord's illustrations are so good in the light novel. <laughs> Sobin is an amazing artist. Like, amazing I, I artist. Love his, yeah, like, I love his art. But I'm, I'm so excited for the movie. I can't wait to watch it next month. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> can't wait to be disappointed by the next season. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm still going to watch it. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, I, I mentioned this. I think I mentioned this already, but I'll, I'll say it here in case I didn't because I, I genuinely can't remember. Um, one thing I did like about this, and it was announced several months before the um, anime premiered, is that many of the voice actors in both the Japanese and English dub did return to reprise their role from the original anime. So that was really cool. Um, it's nice to see that a lot of these voice actors still have a lot of chemistry with each other after all these years. Right. Um, especially, um, I, so I originally watched Spice and Wolf in English, so I kind of got used to hearing Lawrence and Holo being voiced by J. Michael Tatum and Brina Palencia. Um, and they're back obviously as Holo and Lawrence again, and they still have a lot of that same chemistry in the, uh, in the English dub. I, you know, I don't know if you said you've never actually watched um, Spice and Wolf in English, right, John? 
Yeah, I've only ever watched Spice and Wolf in Japanese, so I, I sucked to Japanese. I didn't even mm. bother checking out the English dub. So You should I, give it a I, shot. It's pretty good. It's a really good dub. Yeah, I mean, I might. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I, I, because I watched it originally in Japanese, I want to watch it originally in Japanese as well on the remake side. But yeah, yeah, for sure. That's not to say that, you know, the English dub is bad. I'm pretty sure it's great. Like, the English dub has come a long way in the yeah. recent oh, years. Oh, yeah. Um, like as much as I didn't like the ending of, um, Metallic Rouge, the English mm. dub was fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Great job. Well, that was also an anime that just felt like perfect for an English dub because of how like Western it felt. Well, quite literally in the first episode, in the first five minutes, one of the ladies is singing in English, even in the Japanese yeah. dub. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. Let's actually get into the story, shall we? Um, so I mentioned this earlier. That this adaptation, um, unlike the original anime, uses a framing device of um, Holo recounting the, the the whole series you're about to watch as a story. She's telling the main character of the sequel series, Wolf and Parchment. Um uh, don't really want to say more than that because if you haven't read it, I feel you don't like know. it's so uh, so. I had a complaint about this. Um, actually, I had two. I had two major complaints about Spice and Wolf before I watched it, or one complaint before I watched it, which is more of a com- uh, a cautionary thing. In the preview trailer, I was like, "Man, that's some bad CGI." <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and they didn't even use the wolf CGI that I thought they were going to use because they never got to it. Yeah. They they never got to the end where they're um when they she eventually gets back to Yoitsu like they do in season two. So maybe that's going to be saved for like, they, I know they just announced season two, but maybe they did it as a preliminary mock-up maybe. for the trailer to just like show that. I, I don't know. Cause sometimes I, people, they develop I, like different things at different times. So yeah. And I do want to point out that since you brought it up, that while in the original trailer that was released, the CGI did not look great. Um, what CGI we do see in the series, and granted, it's not a lot. There's not a hefty no. amount of CG in this series, but what we do see is better than what you see in those trailers. Yeah, uh, I I was worried about that, which I'm glad that that got dispelled. Because yeah. uh, I, you know, even regardless of the bad CGI, I still love watching. It's still Spice a good story. Movie. It's a good. It's a great story. Great story. Uh, but. The other complaint I had was literally in the first episode. I'm just like, I can't believe they introduced this character from Wolf and Parchment because it's so obvious where the story ends now. I know. And then I, you, then some you get into the content. As, well, some people because, might see that as like putting the, hor- the cart before the horse. Uh, well, because in my opinion, a lot of like the appeal of Spice and Wolf is the whole will they, won't they, right? Yeah. The whole back and forth between the two characters because – that's how it's framed. It's like, will they, yeah. won't they? And then there's the whole uh, economy thing and like <laughs> learning about economics <laughs> and the character building and character depth of like of Hollow and Lawrence, the two main titular main characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, introducing that character from Wolf and Parchment, it's kind of just like, well, I see an answer already. <laughs> yeah. Like, because I don't read the source material, um, or rather I should say, because you've told me about Wolf and Parchment, I already knew what was going to happen. Yeah. But thanks to that how they framed the first like two minutes of the uh, anime of the first episode it's like okay like come on like anyone with half a brain is gonna understand the implications of what this is right (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah well especially by the end because especially by the end because they return to this framing device a couple of times throughout the run of this season um i think they do it once at the end of like Episode volume 13? one's porn like yeah, episode 13 and then they do it again at the very very end yeah um of the season um and then when you see that other person enter the room you know who it is you can tell by the fucking outline who it is <laughs> yeah if it wasn't even more obvious who it is even though they black out his face it's like come on yeah. we we know who that is <laughs> yeah and you never hear the the or ne- you never see, you hear the voices obviously but you never see the actual characters faces that are talking but you know obviously from one voice it's holo yeah, so to me, that's kind of like my only complaint about the remake is that mm. because as an anime only, um, mm. I'd be upset knowing that I have the answer. Yeah, that 
it's going to answer like, will they, won't they? I, I have the answer to that now. Thanks. <laughs> like that, that kind yeah. of ruins it for me. But I guess, you know, it's more about the journey anyway, though. So that's like, it's a very, yeah. it, it's a very minor complaint if it's a complaint at all. Like there's no issue yeah. with that because the existence of Wolf and Parchment, because there is a fucking VR game where you can yeah. be inside of their cabin. Like there are a bunch of fans out there that have spoiled it for a lot of other people. So even if I never knew Alex and Alex never told me about this, literally on Steam, because that VR game exists, I have the two characters from Wolf and Parchment. I have Hollow and the other character from Wolf and Parchment as my banner on Steam. <laughs> like exactly. I would have found out eventually what happened. I I I can do two plus two equals four. <laughs> A wolf with white hair. What does this mean, John? <laughs> yeah. What does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, um, so it, it's, eh, you know, it's a very, it is what it is. I mean, I, I, it, I know people will have an issue with that, especially if they're anime yeah. only like me. Like I would and have it, had an issue originally if I didn't know, but I already knew. Is, so to me, it's not a big issue. It, it is worth pointing out. I think also that while this adaptation, this anime adaptation of Spice and Wolf is way more faithful to the light novel than the original anime was, that scene is not in the light novels at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I thought it was a reference to the video game, the VR video game that mm -hmm. they released where it's like you can explore their cabin. Because I was like, this is, this is a callback to the video game? Like, what? <laughs> they're, they're taking the non-canon shit and adding it in. Mm. Um... And speaking of changes um, from the very beginning, um, in the original Spice and Wolf anime, we had the character of Chloe, and all my homies hate Chloe. Because <laughs> um, Chloe's a bitch. Um, now, Chloe in the original anime was an anime only character that the creators of the, an or the, I guess, writers of that particular anime adaptation inserted in in like place of the actual character that we got to see in this adaptation, which is Yare. Yeah. Yeah, Yare, 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 however the fuck you say his name. The guy voiced really... by Sagita. <laughs> yes, there's some really <laughs> weird names that you will hear in this in this story, by the way. Um, like Kraft Lawrence. Um, yeah, his name is actually Kraft, but everyone calls him Lawrence. It's like, Lawrence is supposed to be his last name, but everyone calls him Lawrence. But his name mm -hmm. is, his first name is actually Kraft. Um, but yeah, Chloe was like inserted as a way in the original anime, as a way to like create a love triangle. Like thing between Lawrence and Holo and Chloe but it's really it's really weird looking back on it now because they have a very similar like pseudo love triangle that happens in a later arc that appears in the yeah. same anime <laughs> with Nora <laughs> like <laughs> well not just Nora I'm talking about the uh, Amadi that oh. comes out later the oh, one who wants right. to do yeah, the yeah, marriage yeah. contract there's more there's more love triangle see again to me a lot of Spice and Wolf is the whole will they, won't they, and yeah. I hate that I know the answer to that already. But again, <laughs> I've had a, I have had a couple years to get used to it, so it's not a big yeah. deal. But um, but I will say that is one major change that people who are anime only from um, the original anime would probably notice that Chloe is non-existent. <laughs> Thankfully, I honestly <laughs> forgot about Chloe. That's how little she meant to me in the in fact. Exactly. I, I remember what? Amadi. I remember the uh, the crow lady. Um, yeah. I remember the uh, big major points. I remember. I always remember her name is Dion because every time I hear that name, I just think of Dion Sanders. <laughs> Prime time. <laughs> yeah, I I didn't remember her name. I just thought, crow lady. There's uh the traitor guy. It's like I remember people not based on names, but based on characteristics, right? Like yeah, yeah I remember yeah. I remember Nora's name because I'm like I liked Nora. Honestly, yeah. I was like, you know, Lawrence, you could have picked yourself a very nice shepherd girl who wants mm. to be a tailor, okay? Yeah. You could have settled down and opened up a shop just like your a buddy. A tailor shop. <laughs> a tailor shop. Okay. You could have done something else. You know, you didn't have to go with the wolf, but you did. But you did. Listen, but, sometimes uh, wolf pussy is just too much to pass <laughs> up, man. <laughs> but uh yeah so like i remember nora the shepherd i remembered um amadi the traitor i remember him as yeah. the traitor guy who <laughs> the guy who tries to cuck lawrence that's yes. how i remember him uh and then i remember bird lady that's it yeah, <laughs> that's Dion, a, that, like yeah. i'm like here are the three main people i remember from the anime i don't remember anything else <laughs> yeah from the uh, um, original anime i should say i remember the story like vaguely the story yeah. of how everything happens but <clears throat> 
I mean, I and I, like when 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 Lawrence meets Holo for the first time in the cart, that plays out largely the same. Yeah, um, exactly the same. There's there's something I wanted to uh, point out. I want to read a very short passage from the light novel that should give you some indication of how Lawrence thinks of Holo upon first meeting her. <laughs> so okay. This is like right after he he finds her in the cart, right? <clears throat> Listen to this ship. <clears throat> <laughs> Despite the fact that the girl hadn't answered his questions, Lawrence did not pose them again. This was because the girl, slowly awakening before him and entirely naked, was unspeakably beautiful. Her hair, illuminated by the moonlight in the wagon, looked as soft as silk and fell over her shoulders like the finest cloak. The strands that fell down her neck to her collarbone drew a line so beautiful it put the finest painting of the Virgin Mary to shame. Her supple arms were so fine they seemed to, seemed to be carved from ice, and exposed now in the middle of her body were two small breasts, so beautiful they gave the impression of being carved from some inorganic material. They gave off a strangely vital scent, as if housed within her arresting charm was a warmth. What a phenomenal way to Simp. describe someone. Simp. Soy boy. Soy boy. <laughs> yeah, in the light novel, that's literally how he feels like looking at Holo the first time he sees her. I mean, I get it. He's like, he, he's awestruck. It's love at first sight. Uh, if that wasn't obvious by the everything that happens afterwards, like Lawrence yeah. loves Holo. And again, the whole will they, won't they, this is where it all starts, right? Yeah. And it's just like, I get it. You know, she a baddie. But at the same time, just like, there are certain aspects of Lawrence where I'm just like, dude, what what is wrong with you? Like, fucking Lawrence, yeah. man. What are you doing? Well, it's like, he even says this too uh, when he's talking to, to Holo at one point where he's like, you know, I can be a little dense. Sometimes you got to tell me straight up. <laughs> yeah, it's... There are certain parts of the um, remake where I was just like, oh, I remember. It made me, th I forgot how frustrated I got watching certain parts of the arcs. Like, yeah. uh, the whole Nora arc uh, and the church and all that stuff, I was just like, I wasn't, like, that's whatever, right? Yeah. But then, um, yeah, the whole, like, losing the gold thing and, like, being a fucking being so desperate and then yelling at Holo and, like, getting pissed off at her. I was like, Lawrence, just just talk to her, man. She's the wise wolf holo. Like, what's wrong yeah. with you, dude? <laughs> talk out your emotions. Which, I mean, plays into his character, right? He's been yeah. an itinerant merchant since he was, like, 18. And he's 25 at the point when this story starts. Um, he said, look at his hair. He's lived a rough life for someone who's only 25. <laughs> yeah, his hair's already fully white. Um, um, but yeah, like, it makes sense. He's lonely. He don't talk to people very much, except when he's doing business. Right. And I mean, it's like, kind of makes sense. Well, it's, it explores a lot of like how Holo and Lawrence are going to interact in the future, because if they didn't introduce a crisis for Holo to see, like, this is what Lawrence is like during a mm. crisis. Like yeah. you, you've never seen this man at his worst so far. You've only seen him while he's in his element. <laughs> So it's yeah. a good um, contrast of characters where it's like, yeah, we know Lawrence is like, he's a smart guy. He can try to get like, he, he can always try to piece things together together to get them out of trouble thus far. Mm -hmm. Right. When they are escaping the village and stuff like that, the heretic hunt. Um, it's like, he uses the favors of other people to help him, stuff like that. And he yeah. seems really powerless and weak compared to Holo. Cause you know, she's a literal goddess, but it, it's like, that wasn't enough to show us like, his weakness, a, mm -hmm. a weak side of him. So that's why it was good to introduce the whole like um, military winter trip being canceled and him losing out, he, him making a bad deal. Like the biggest yeah. fumble of his entire life. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. It, like, and you see him be like entirely desperate and he's, he's finally in an element where he doesn't know how to have the upper hand. And so right. he's, he's looking for any kind of way out basically. Yeah. Also, and, that, that scene where he yells at Holo is like, oh, like why would you yell at her like that? Why? I know. Why would you do that? And, but then it's like, but I then would, it, it I also set shows you like, right now. <laughs> it also showed how deep of a heart Holo had, though, because it's like she's mm. she's talked about how she craves companionship and she wants to go back home because you know you're a human, you live a couple 
tens of years. I've, I'm a god. I can literally live forever. Yeah. So she's like, I'm never going to make that mistake ever again. So she wants to go back to her village, but she still dabbles in the fact like, oh, I still enjoy your company because she's she's lonely. Uh, yeah. But it also shows the the depth of her hearts and her, the warmth of herself because – she sees Lawrence for who he really is because even though he was like, he yelled at her and stuff during this arc and it made me go like, Oh, Lawrence, you're about to fumble this bag. You fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly that it happens more than once too in the entire series. And he's like, God damn it, Lawrence, you're about to fumble this bag again. I swear to God, dude, <laughs> <laughs> bro. Like, how are you going to fumble a bag? Like, holo? what's wrong with you? But, uh, yeah, she understands that. Like he was mad at the situation at his own helplessness. He wasn't mad at her. Like, even though he finds out like the reason when he's going around begging for money, uh, why he didn't get money was cause he was toting around hollow, like showing off. Like I have a beautiful wife though. I'm broke right now and I, I got scammed, but could you please loan me some money? Even though it's like, what the fuck are you doing? Cause hollow wanted to come along and he didn't say nothing about it. And it's just like, Oh damn. It was good. It was so yeah. good to show off to characters. Like the writing in this is impeccable. Yeah. Well, it also kind of goes to show like a lot of those people that he was going to were people that he was not necessarily friends with, but was familiar with through his like trading and stuff that he'd done. And right. because they saw him with a woman, it's like, well, you got money to waste on this woman. Why do you need money from me? Yeah. <laughs> All because she wanted to come along to watch. And yeah. he didn't say anything about that. And it's just like, but he never blamed her. Because yeah. it's like I'm, I'm, and it's like, oh man, like oh, it's so good. We get to learn so much about two characters throughout this entire thing. Even though, you know, I, like I said, I was upset at, at Lawrence for yelling at her, but it's like, whoa, yeah, it's good. It's, like, That's, he, listen, it's so you yell at her. What you you get one time, Lawrence? You yell at her again. <laughs> I know. Well, it's just so up. it's so human of an experience feeling yes. this. Like it's not a stereotypical like meet cute rom com that's what's so good about spice and wolf that it's not a stereotypical rom-com it's that the hum that lawrence is very human in his emotions and holo can certainly show very human emotions as well like they're very complex people mm -hmm. that's that's great like sometimes yeah. you don't like just eating cardboard and just like overly chewed uh rom-com protagonist where it's like he's a dqn you know the dense i oh did you say something i didn't hear you then he has a whole yeah. harem of women like sometimes and the whole thing like oops i fell and i grabbed your boobies to stop my fall we're in love now yeah <laughs> sometimes uh i don't like consuming trash and i, I like to <laughs> refined quality anime like spice and wolf so yes <laughs> <laughs> oh man um you brought them up earlier so i'll i'll, I'll talk about them now so the church which is a recurring antagonistic force in this story right. um obviously with holo being a pagan deity or demigod um something i was uh in the original anime um well let me back up in the light novel the church and they never really say for certain but the church is very much positioned as the catholic church um in the original anime uh before it had actually gone out and been released the animators had actually put like christian crosses and stuff in the churches like in the background and stuff right but shortly before that the anime was released they went in and took all that stuff out because the uh, i don't know remember who it was but someone on the staff was very concerned about the fact that if they portray the catholic church as evil or as an antagonistic force in the story it might actually upset the catholic church in real life um so Which they took a, out i think that's a, a valid like concern because you know as an anime you don't want to make enemies right of, of... yeah and it's like maybe in, that's um... why i found that weird christian bible thing on on the spice and wolf <laughs> dvd that i bought oh yeah um it was like when we were talking about we were we were playing dead space on stream and you're like this unitology stuff sounds a lot like scientology <laughs> and in fact i called it scientology a couple of times on accident mm. oops <laughs> Oops. You <laughs> expect to get served papers soon, John. <laughs> uh, uh, hopefully not. If you're going to sue anyone, please sue Alex. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, uh, so in, in the original anime, there was like no religious symbology whatsoever, which is really weird for any kind of church or religious institution. Like all religions have symbology. Um, I'm happy that 
even though in this adaptation it's still not Christian symbology that they use, they at least give the church some kind of symbol. A symbol, yeah. Yeah. Um, because even in the light novel, they're talking about like crosses and crucifixes and stuff like that. So it's, it's made very, very obvious that the church in the light novel is supposed to be the Catholic church. I mean, like it's supposed to be done in medieval times, right? Like it, yeah. that's uh, the obvious setting here. It's not in Japan. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even though e Yoitsu and Nyohara sound like very Japanese city names. That's extremely true, but like the food, the bread, and they eat, they drink ale, so like and beer it, and it, wine. It feels like it's Europe. It feels like it's yeah. supposed to be uh, medieval Europe. Yeah, which is what uh, Asuna Hasakura, the creator of the light novels, has said. He's supposed the the world is supposed to be reminiscent of 16th century Europe. Yeah, um, and it feels that way. I think the the both the anime and the light novel do a really good job of portraying the world like that. Um, and like the church going on crusades to like stomp out paganism, like which is something that happens uh, at the end of this uh, season. Um, it, it's it's good world building, really, is what it is. The church is used often in this uh, story for world building, and I like it that way. I think that's a great way to use an antagonistic force in a story like that. I also really liked that it was like twenty five episodes, but they only mm -hmm. covered four arcs or four volumes. four volumes. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, it's it's these four right here that I have with me, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I remember we're talking about um it's only going to be 25 episodes and the original run was 12, right? The original anime had 12 and 12. The the first season had 12 and the second season had 13, I believe. Yeah, so because of that, I was like, okay, so they're going to cover we thought it was just going to be a remake of the first series. Like season yeah. one, season two of the first series, but yeah, uh, I was completely wrong. They they just were like, "Fuck it, we're adapting the whole thing one to four. Yeah, no skips. Uh, yeah, because it. So this particular the the remake does cover volume four. In the original anime, it does not. It's it's volumes one, two, uh, three, and five. Um. So yeah, this one ends off with volume four. I did want to ask you about that. Uh, I know we're kind of going all over the place here with the fucking story, but um, you had never seen anything for volume four, so it was brand new material to you. Completely brand new. Going I, like surprisingly, how, with how much I like Spice and Wolf, the anime, right, mm -hmm. the remake and the original, I have yet to go read the light novel. I don't know why. You should, man. It's so good. <laughs> I, I'm i sort of enjoying the fact that I don't know information. <laughs> hey, you know what? Because Listen, it's like, it's here's blowing what I would my suggest. mind of how well it's being done. I'm like, oh man, this is great. Like, I don't know. I don't have anything to compare it to. And I don't have any expectations. <laughs> here's what I would suggest, John. Because this does seem like they're, they're planning on doing a full adaptation of the light novel series. Um I would wait until this anime series gets finished, then go read the light novels. Because one thing I will I will give the, the light novel immense credit for, and some of the stuff is kind of lost in the anime adaptation, and it would be anyway, is there are a lot of instances in the light novel where Holo and Lawrence are on the cart traveling between places, and there is a ton of dialogue between them. And it's all very well written. Um, that a lot of that's lost in the in the anime adaptation by necessity because you don't right. want to have like two or three episodes go by and it's all they're doing is talking on the cart. <laughs> the meeting arcs, <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Season three, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly what it would be like too for like two or three episodes at a time. It really it would break up the pacing. I think a lot. It works for a light novel because it's a great way to um, get like world building and character building done in between your destinations that you're trying to get to for your storytelling. But in an anime sense, I don't think it would work. No, like to me, the anime did a great job at pacing and showing their relationship unravel and like build mm -hmm. like it. Yeah. As it furthers, as their journey goes further along and the trials and tribulations they face together and like how they resolve them and stuff. I think it it's great at pacing it and making it seem like it's believable. Right. Yeah. Like, this is not a trip that takes a day. This is something that happens. Like, it, it's implied that because they're traveling by horse cart and stuff like that, seasons change, you know? Yeah. Like, eventually, they're, like, going through, and they're like, oh, we have to get through before the winter because there's going to be a whole storm. Like, it's, we know that it's yeah. – he goes at the end of Summer Harvest, and that's when he meets her 
and then he it's now the getting near to the winter yeah uh yeah by by the it really starts out at the very beginning of fall and then by the time we get through this first season it's like near the end of fall they're getting toward the winter yeah um and i will say that's something else the anime this particular anime did excuse me a really good job of um because the background art changes like the 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 color scheme and the color palette changes from the beginning of the season to the end <laughs> with the background art that he starts treating holo like a personal uh hand warmer <laughs> it's like give me your tail <laughs> give me your so tail cold. Mitch. it's so fucking cold out here <laughs> um oh. but yeah that's another aspect of this um adaptation that i think is definitely better than the first one because in the first one the color palette never really changes throughout the entire run you don't really get a sense that the season's changing but in this no. one you do yeah well i mean other than the uh outfits they change outfits to like yeah. here's like fall gear now here's winter gear she gets a hat yeah. <laughs> she gets yeah. a, a bigger hat <laughs> um i have to ask so in these first four volumes that are covered which is your actual favorite arc ah uh, because I love the stuff with Amadi. I I have a love hate thing with the Amadi thing, because <laughs> one on one hand I get irrationally upset at Lawrence for being a fucking dickhead, idiot. <laughs> like you, you idiot, you absolute idiot. Like your girl is flipping out. She's tweaking right now because she learned about some shit. Like he he's so he doesn't know what to do. And it's just like, bro, what do you mean you don't know what to do? You've been with her two months. Comfort her. Have Get you ever girl. thought of giving her a fucking hug? Like, literally just give, hold her, man. She needs somebody to talk. She needs somebody to lean on. But I understand that why it was like that, because he doesn't want to take advantage of her when she's in a time of weakness. And, at you know, and also, like, I love seeing that smug little bitch Amadi get his comeuppance. Like, ha ha, <laughs> you little cuck. <laughs> you thought you were going to cuck him, but now you're getting cucked. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Like, I, I, it's like a love hate thing, right? Like, it's been, because yeah. it's like, I I understand Amadi was also like love at first sight, and he's like, uh, heart on his sleeve type of guy. You know, he's like, confesses, like, oh, let's get married. I'll, I'll buy you off. Like, I'll do everything, girl. And it's like, that's good, but Hollow is not someone, um, who would just swap sides like that, you know? Yeah. She sees that Lawrence is more of a man of substance than Amadi ever could but be. Man, do I love the fact that she plays him like a fucking fiddle? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. And Lawrence thinks the entire time that he's gonna lose her, and then it just comes on, and she just drops the pyrite. That it's like I'm selling too. Yeah. It's like she was dropping all these hints to him and it's just like he wasn't picking it up she had the crow feathers and shit be like i'm the one who bought the pyrite first and but that was a great uh, framing device for us to learn more about like the crow lady you know like yes oh, there are more there are other deities out here other than just holo, than holo. Yeah. and the fact that uh the with Amer's opening and stuff, the sequence and stuff we learned like the story from the crow lady that love between a like deity and a human is possible so it's mm -hmm. like and eh, and eh, we get world building mm -hmm. we get tension like it's it's perfect dude this is oh. this is why I, this is why i love that particular arc so much because not only are we getting a shit ton of world building we're also getting like an actual progression of our characters right along with it yeah and it, it works so well it's very it's it's kind of Overlord in that respect. How with Overlord you get world building on top of the actual. It never it never stops to do world building. Like the world building is constant. Yeah, and that's what well, this I mean, arc feels like. <laughs> Overlord is generally just like, all right, the first half just world building, just stuff yeah. happening outside of Nazrik or people in response to Nazrik. Not actually Momonga doing anything or Ains doing anything. And then the second half is like Ains doing shit and like his yeah. side. It's like side side A side, side B. Like, of the story of what's happening. But, um, yeah, I I really like the Nora arc, but I think the mm. Amadi arc is probably, it, it, it is a lot better. I just like the Nora arc because I like seeing, like, Holo have to, like, struggle. Like, she's, now she's jealous. Like, it's not just him being jealous, now Man. she's jealous. <laughs> oh, listen, let me tell you something. Watching <laughs> this, because it has been a while since I have either read or watched um, the original Spice and Wolf. God, Holo is so cute when she's jealous. <laughs> It's so uh, adorable. It's so adorable. Yeah, and then like 
like the animators adding in just random fucking things like holo dancing doing the little dance. oh yes it's so good i'm just like oh my god oh i love that it's like it shows how much how cute she is oh, lawrence you yeah. idiot how, how could you also this bag i didn't realize this until um a few hours ago actually so people might not realize this but pyrite is a real thing yeah, isn't it uh, fool's gold? And I have I have some right here. It's it actually cool. does the crystal. Yeah, it's fool's gold. It literally does grow into ninety degree crystals naturally. It looks it looks so fake, but these are it's actual pyrite crystals, and this is exactly how they grow. I got these when I was spelunking in a cave somewhere, and I just happened to find it, and I chipped it off. That's actually super cool. <laughs> Yeah, I was about to say like, did you buy pyrite for just like this bit? Like, is this no, no, a no. Bit? <laughs> I've, no, I've had the, I've had this for like 15, 20 years now. But I was just in a cave and I found it while we were spelunking, and I'm like, sure, I'll take this with me. It's I, I had never actually seen pyrite growing naturally, pyrite crystals growing naturally in nature. So I was like, this is kind of cool. Well, because for a lot of minerals, they grow up, they grow in lattices, right? Mm -hmm. um, they have crystal lattices, and how they're lined up has a lot to do with how they yeah. form. Like. As you can see, a lot of things crystallize into shards, into like specific yes. shapes, like basalt uh, columns. They look like little hexagons. Mm -hmm. It's like you wouldn't think those are like real, but it's like nope, those are real. It's a real fucking uh, rock. Forms like that. Yeah. Um. But anyway, I just wanted to show that off because it's like, hey, they're talking about pyrite. I, mean, I actually, hey, I, I, I have, have I have a reason. <laughs> I have a reason to finally show off this pyrite that I got. <laughs> it was all a bit. He's been queuing for thirty years. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's also something else that I think the anime well, and the light novel does well is explaining economics like you would think as boring as that sounds it wouldn't make for a good anime but man does it is it fucking fun to watch sometimes oh yeah like the whole pre-stock market stuff right they yeah. had they, they were doing stock market shit before the stock market was invented by the way yeah the trading uh, pits so and they they do that in this and they also talk about <laughs> buying on credit and how that represents like shorts and stuff uh short yeah. selling or um and selling on credit calls that's how puts. yeah that's yeah. that's how uh lawrence almost fucks himself because he sells on credit yeah but it's just like man look at all this real world economic shit that has been around for a long time people have been doing this for a long time the stock market is nothing new we've we've had stock market stuff for a long time not in yeah. the sense that we have it now where we have a monetary value but we still have things as callbacks to what we used to do like being able to buy things on credit um aka taking a loan or assuming commodities I'm, trading yeah commodities trading like that's been around buy, for over a thousand years well it's like People saying, I will buy a harvest of X amount of 100 kilos of wheat at this price right now, but you don't have the stock right now, but I'll buy it at the end of the harvest. So you can either lock in a really good price for the harvest or a really bad price, depending on the, how the rest of the harvest goes. That has been yeah. around for thousands of years. People have been yeah. doing that for a long time. Yeah, hell, they even even in the uh, the first like major arc where they're doing the uh, the currency devaluation, mm -hmm. currency speculation has been around for a long time too. Yeah. Like it, it's so funny thinking about it because it's like I I know a little bit about finances and stuff like that. So to me, it's interesting that like that this is even in here and it, it it's it's real. Like yeah, it's not the main driving force. Like I said, the main driving no. force of Spice and Wolf to me is the whole like will they won't they the meat cute and the will they won't they. But yeah. there's also economics involved, and it's just like yeah. that. Also, this is a thing of by the way, just happening in the background. And it's, it's just it's, interesting. It's very interesting, especially since it's not, at least in the sense of the world that they're in, it's not a capitalist economic system. It's a mercantile economic system that they have. So there are differences, um, especially like when we when we talk about the uh, where they show the um, the currency. It's like the state set the uh, metal purities in all the currency that they used back then. Now it's all on paper. Well, now it's all on spreadsheets, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now it's just fucking ones and zeros in a computer somewhere <laughs> now it's logged on a dos operated computer and it, yes <laughs> hopefully it never dies it's dos 2 <laughs> actually so it, it's got a little more life in it oh my god that reminds <laughs> me this is uh, apropos of nothing we're talking about that reminds me a few months ago when they had that massive uh crash with the airline computers right and southwest is like yeah we're still running we're we're using windows 3.1 <laughs> 
And they were literally like a lot of their systems that they use still run on Windows 3.1, so it was unaffected. Hey man, if <laughs> that's the thing about like development. Um sure there are new features and stuff with new updates, uh firmware updates and stuff like that, new versions of things. You get more features and they fix th certain things, but when you use a system for long enough, you know all of the issues with it. And mm -hmm. you know how to fix all of those issues <laughs> eventually. So that's yeah. why it's hard to, like... That's why for a lot of game engines, they don't go to the newest versions. Because if you go to a new version, like I've experienced with my own game, going to a new version when I was on Unity still, it fucked everything up. It just <laughs> fucked it all up. It don't work no more. And they're like, fuck, why? Why would you do this, Unity? <laughs> but that's why they have, like... um. LTS versions, right? Uh, Long-term stable. Yeah. I think that's what it stands for. That's like, this is the version of a firmware for like Unity or Godot or whatever, the LTS, the long-term stable. We mm -hmm. promise we will give you support for this version for X amount of time. Mm -hmm. So a lot of game companies will only develop in older versions because at least we know all the problems with the older versions. Yeah. And it's stable. Yeah, it's stable. It's the best um, part. But I just, you saying that made me think about that, how it's like, <laughs> yeah, hey, it older stupid. stuff sometimes just works. Yeah, but uh, it's interesting that this mercantile system has it's been around for so long, no one really thinks about yeah. that. That yeah. People feel like the stock exchange and stuff like that is all new and like, oh, business, this. The digital boards the, are new. <laughs> yeah, digital boards are new, but the, the concept itself is old. I mean, hell, even the stock market today, the actual trading floor is called the pit. It's always been called the pit. Even back in the 16th century, the trading pit was called the trading pit. Yeah, it's been around for a long time. Um, that's, that is something I actually, I do genuinely, as much as I love like the romance between Holo and Lawrence, and I like the drama that unfolds around them, like learning about the economic systems of the day back then is still incredibly interesting to me. And it's per, it's portrayed in a way uh, by Hasakura in a way that's easy to digest. It's not dry or bland. It's also not a um, like major driving force in the story either. It's just kind of in the background, which I appreciate. I mean, like it's there. I mean, it's it's cool to like give me a little thing of like he is a merchant. Um, mm -hmm. We have a little bit of mercantile knowledge. We can learn mm -hmm. a little bit about trading. That's cool, you know, but. Like I said, it's it's mainly a rom com. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, if you uh, if you like the way that economics is portrayed in Spice and Wolf, just wait until you see how religion is do dove into in Wolf and Parchment. Oh, <laughs> I have no idea what's gonna happen in Wolf and Parchment. I I, I know one thing, one specific thing. Mm. Um. Oh God, what was I gonna go with this? Um. Yeah, going going back to uh, the end of of this season, um, I was skeptical. I think of ending it on volume four um, because number one, because I knew how volume four ended. It's, it's kind of like this: all right, "Hey, bye, we're going on to our next adventure," kind of ending. Whereas volume five kind of ends on, I guess, more of a I won't say finite or final feeling, but like it feels like more like closure than the ending of volume four well because volume uh, the ending of volume five is like okay what is the original goal of the journey i need to get back to yoitsu mm -hmm. i need to check up yeah. on my peeps what happens yeah. at the end of volume five we get back to yoitsu to check up on her peeps yeah that's a pretty fine like to that's the story arc there we go <laughs> that makes sense to me like why they would end it there at five um yeah i I but having how watched, ended, having though, watched, having watched this now and seeing what happens in Volume Four, can you kind of see why they skipped over it? I can see why they skipped over it because it's kind of like Volume Four basically just tells us like, oh, we know, we now know how to get to Yoitsu, and we we learned some stuff that happened in Yoitsu, you know, about the moon eating bear, and so we learn like, a lot about the church, <laughs> and we learn a lot about the church, and it's just all background noise, and it's yeah. like, okay, this section is not vital to anything other than like. Nothing, actually, nothing. Not even the relationship buds anymore. Other than just like showing Holo have emotions, uh, yeah. And then Lawrence well, and kind of learning I, I, how to like care for her. I will say the the relationship between Elsa and Evan is kind of sweet to watch. 
because they, they genuinely love each other. But yeah. it's like, ooh, I, I, I work for the church. I shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> yeah. I just feel like, so in volume like one, two, and three, we've seen a lot more evolution with the main characters. Mm-hmm. In volume four, we don't really see anything about that. We 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 all we learn is they're like hey, background we, characters in the story, really. Yeah, it's well, we learn more about the background characters than we do Lawrence. Lawrence doesn't grow, or nothing happens and challenges him. The only thing it's we not see, bad though. It's, it's not, not bad. No, no, no. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that in terms of like volumes of why they would skip it because it doesn't focus on the main characters. Yeah. The only thing that happens to a main character in this is that. Holo finds out about what happens to Yoitsu while she's been gone through a book. Yeah. And then yeah. she gets mad and she doesn't know how to handle it. And then Lawrence finally, like, you know, after three volumes of fumbling about, figures out how to keep her calm and being like, I, I got you, girl. Like, don't worry. And he knows how to phrase it a little bit better. And it's just like, yeah. that's cute to see. That's that's great. But we don't see anything outside of that. Like, there's no more yeah. character depth or growth that we see here. I mean, I guess if you want to say there's any kind of growth or change between Holo and Lawrence in Volume 4 or the last, what, five episodes of of this season, um, it does show that they've kind of learned a little bit more about how to communicate with each other. Yeah. Because there's, there's a lot less... more comfortable with each other now, yeah, after the yeah. whole Mahdi shit. <laughs> there, well, there, there's less... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Vagaries between them. Like, they know what they're saying even though they're still teasing each other. Yeah, and I mean they're a lot more straightforward with their feelings and stuff now compared to before. Yeah. Like before, it was just kind of like a, oh yeah maybe, but now it's just like oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. they like each other. Yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> uh, what's the there's there's something that she does in this that I, I where she's like they're they're literally close to each other and like embracing and she's like there's this moment is like they gonna fuck. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> and then and then Lawrence pulls back and it's like, nah, he's too he's too wholesome for this. <sighs> Lawrence, oh my god. I don't know how you could be traveling with Holo for so long and not just like make a move, dude. Like, come on. The cra- that's the crazy thing, because like and it's not it's not something that's touched on in the um in the anime, but in the light novel, it said that he's experienced love before. But it was with uh it was with someone that he knew he couldn't be with. <laughs> now there's a there's a little short passage in the first volume where he's talking about like a past uh experience that he had where he was stuck in a a town or a village or something for like a winter, like all winter long because they were snowed in and he fell in love with the servant girl at the inn. <laughs> oh. Uh but he knew that he couldn't do anything because when winter passed he couldn't stay there. See, and that's great building for his character of why he's so hesitant to do anything with Holo because it's like mm. the original goal is like Holo's like, hey, I need to get the fuck out of this village. Also, I'm a wolf god, uh, a god of harvest, BT dubs. Yeah. And, and I'm then lonely it's like, as fuck. <laughs> I'm lonely, but at the end of the day, I'm just trying to get back to Yoitsu. That's the goal. So he understands that yeah. this journey is going to end. And that's a detail that I wish I, I knew because it makes even more sense about like, uh, Hollow and Lawrence both going like, oh, you know, there are easier ways to get there, more direct paths, but maybe we'll take the pass less traveled and it'll take a little bit longer, we'll be a little bit more roundabout. We'll take the scenic we'll, route. Yeah, we'll take the scenic route. And it's just like, it makes more sense uh, of why they w- would do that. Because it's like, it's, yeah. he's not, he's extending his trip with her on purpose, but he doesn't know how to say that because it's like, he's, res- he's so reserved in how he feels. It's like, that. that's great. That's great. I love that. Yeah. Ah, I should read it. I really should. It's, you get stuff like that in, in the light novel. It's, it's again, it's, I understand why stuff like that is left out of the anime because it's like, it fucks with the pacing if you try and force it in there. Um, but it's like, even like in episode 13 of this um, particular uh, adaptation it almost feels like a filler episode because there's a lot of stuff where holo is thinking about her past mm-hmm. um and there's like flashbacks and stuff that she's having um that it's not technically filler because this stuff is in the light novel just not all at once <laughs> so mm. it's kind of peppered throughout but they decided to put a lot of this into one episode yeah so it's not so- breaking up the pacing later on 
I personally, I'm all for 100% like accurate adaptation, so I'm not mad that they would stop at volume four. Um, like mm-hmm. I said, I really like the fact that they spent 25 episodes over four volumes. That to me is good pacing. Like yeah. for yeah. a novel we- like this that has so much more detail. We we've, we've talked about this before because you read quite a few light novels and web novels, especially ones that end up getting anime adaptations. And one of the common criticisms that you have is that the the pacing in a lot of light novel adaptations feels very rushed. Yeah, because on average they are going to be adapting three to four volumes, so that means three to four episodes per volume. Yeah, like three episodes and- for one volume is not very many. Like that's, yeah, I mean, if we take away like OP time, ED times, we're looking at maybe 20 minutes or maybe an hour. Like, yeah, there are novels out there that are one book per movie. Like Lord of the Rings is one book per movie. Yeah. Right. And that has so, a phenomenal runtime. <laughs> and it's like, that's two and a half, three hours, bro. <laughs> how, yeah. how are you, how are you going to try to like fit now? Now, granted, most light novels aren't like a thousand page essays okay like lord of the rings is they're not not giant thick compendiums okay i understand that because there are certain light novels like um what's the fucking one from last season that i was like the anime was absolute ass and i started reading the light novel because of it wistoria what wistoria no not wistoria that that was completely different for that was asked for a completely different reason (laughs) (laughs) Uh, you've Um, talked about so much the last season (laughs) God, I can't remember. Because you watched a lot last season. Um, Failure Frame. Failure Frame. That's what it is. Failure Frame. Like, Failure Frame, the um, light novel is 300 pages of volume. God damn. That could be... I don't see how that couldn't be adapted in three episodes. That Mm. makes sense to me. You know? Then you have other novels that are like 1,200, 1,300, 1,500, 1,700 pages four episodes really for that no way absolutely no way there is no po- <laughs> like you, the math don't math brother <laughs> like yeah i mean i will be, be fair with spice and wolf's light novels they t- tend to run anywhere between 275 to 300 pages and a volume but there's a lot of dialogue in here yeah and so you can shorten up some of this dialogue to get some of the same ideas across but that's my point like in certain volumes of uh of novels there are things that have a lot of fluff things that don't make sense and there's like it has 300 pages sure but how much dialogue is that because they they'll do yeah. they'll do breaks where they're having conversations yeah and they'll yeah, be yeah. like four words three words and next line and it's like that's just to pump up the page numbers which is yeah. ridiculous by the way that that should not be a thing I understand yeah, that publishers reads, don't do this please well it reads better when it's like that so that way you know for a fact that there's different people having a conversation and that way yeah, you I don't guess. have to add in. And then he said, but then she said, like, I, I get that it's a style of writing. See, but... and, and spice and spice and wolf, it's mostly Lawrence and holo talking. So it's like, it starts with Lawrence said, holo said, and then it just goes back forth, back forth, back forth. <laughs> you never have to say anything else. Yeah. So it, that's kind of just like, to me, I thought the pacing was excellent because I learned a lot more. Uh, watching mm-hmm. the remake and i just like <laughs> i like learning lore about the novel granted yeah. like i said there are certain novels where it's like i don't care about the lore like failure frame there's there is there is no extra lore in failure frame other than oh man things are happening and i i'm mad and go punch the goddess <laughs> <laughs> and that's it and that's it that's that's the entire framework there's no actual like lore other than that <laughs> um yeah, I, I'm very happy with the fact that this is paced as well as it is. I'm happy that they didn't try to, like, cram the first five volumes into this because that would have been terrible. Oh, um, that would have been god-awful. That would have been way worse. Because uh, I, I was like, when we were watching it, you're like, yeah, they are going to adapt uh, volume four. Then I was like, but 25 episodes, the same amount of episodes as season yeah. one, season two. But they and went we only to realized five, that. We only realized five. that at the end of episode 19 because the the preview for that showed something that happens in volume four. And I'm like, Oh, okay. We're doing this, but there's only what five, six episodes left. How are you going to cram two volumes into five or six episodes? Yeah. That would have thrown the pace. Like, like you were saying uh, volume four, because it's like a lot of stuff is just background stuff. It's not 
terribly important, I would say. Yeah. Uh, then maybe they could sum it up in two episodes and then leave the last four episodes for the last volume. I'm like, yeah, that's okay. But that would fuck up the pacing so bad because we had basically, essentially, five, six episodes per volume till this point. That, yeah. that wouldn't make sense. It 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 has it did it fluctuate throughout the runtime. It was like five to six episodes per volume, but yeah. it's made it so that each volume that they're adapting is getting a chance to breathe. Yeah, I, I like I said, I'm all for adapting a, a really good light novel as close to the source as possible. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense for like a you know a visual medium like anime. Um, like for we've talked about this earlier this year when we did our spoiler cast for Mashoku Tensei. As much as you and I love Mashoku Tensei, there's a lot they leave out from the light novels. Yeah, and the things that they leave out from the well, at least for me, because the web novels, because I I haven't read the light novels yet. I'm planning to <laughs> eventually. I will. I'll yeah. read it. I have uh, I have to assume though that the stuff that they left out is still left out, whether it's from the light novel or the web novel. Yeah, they they leave out certain things, ba- a lot of background things that. To me, it builds a lot into, like, the reasons why Rudy is the way that he is and the reason he does things the way that he does. The crazy stuff is the amount that you've said has been left out about Rudy's dad. Yeah. there's. You said there's, they've left out a lot. Well, because Paul is not, like, a major character, and especially after what happens. Like, we don't have to talk about Paul anymore. Um, but they they leave out a lot of background stuff, especially from the light novel, because the light novel is a lot more detailed than the web novel. And I'm complaining about them leaving stuff out from the web novel. Yeah. So it's like you can only imagine how much they have left out from the light novel. Yeah. Uh, But still, I mean, as much as we praise that anime, and we have a lot, um, it's a great anime. You should go watch it, especially if you like Isekai. Uh, I I don't feel like we need to be talking about or having people recommending it to people because a lot of people have watched Mishoka Tensei. A lot of people have agreed it's a really good anime. Um. But it's still, it, I still think the an, anime adaptation of it didn't give all of its source material as n- enough of a chance to breathe as it should have. Like I said, I would have appreciated Mushoku Tensei if it had, if it adapted a pacing like, like this Spice and Wolf remake. I, I would have yeah. appreciated that more because there's a lot more going on and there's a lot of background things that make it easier to understand why Rudy is the way that he is, why things are happening the way that they're happening. And yeah. it's just better for my. It's the better only, for the enjoyment of it if you get to know that. Yeah. The only problem with that is runtime because you're going to need extra episodes to do it now. <laughs> you need like but maybe one or two I, extra I episodes like per arc. It also has to deal with a lot of like, what's the purpose of why this anime was remade or why is this anime airing? Like most animes, like we've talked about before, they're made because they want to sell the manga. They want to sell the source material, essentially. Yeah, whatever that source material happens to be. Yeah, they, they're like, hey, this source material is popular. We want to adapt it as an anime to make more people get into it so we can either merchandise or we get people to go read the source material, whatever. And in that sense, it's like, okay, if you gave me a gen- – like, Rosario plus Vampire. The mm. anime, completely different from the manga. They completely retcon a bunch of shit. They they do things out of order, con- like, constantly, and they leave out a bunch of shit Boobs. about, like <laughs> – Yeah, <laughs> but – Boobs. The – animes themselves make you go want to go read the manga mm-hmm. it's done its job it yep. did what it's supposed to do if, as same effectively... with spice and wolf the original anime led to like i think it was a 48 percent jump in light novel sales yeah so that's like how it's supposed to be done now the remake correctly. however doesn't feel like it's paced towards like hey, you guys should go read uh, Spice and Wolf. It feels like, hey, Spice and Wolf is done. We're going to adapt the whole thing and just make it awesome. And I'm like, yes, yeah, Yeah, that. that's what it feels like. That. If It feels like we're watching a group of people make an adaptation of something, number one, that they genuinely love, and number two, they realize that would do really well as an anime. Yeah, it has done really well as an anime. Like, yeah. I haven't looked at any of the numbers like on any of the charts and stuff yet, but I... Like people have always been big fans of Spice and Wolf anyway. Like, I, I, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's a um, bad thing to remake no. it like this, especially since I think the first seer or the first anime series. As much as you and I love it, I think you and I would be the first to admit it has its problems. It does. It's got pacing problems uh, quite a lot. It's got pacing um, problems. It's got a lot of anime original stuff that they put in there for no goddamn reason. Yeah, like. 
I would recommend if anyone has not watched Spice and Wolf before, just go watch the remake. Watch this one. Yeah. yeah. Watch the remake. Don't watch the original. Like, if you want to watch the original, go ahead. But I would tell you right now, like, to me, the remake is far superior. <laughs> it's, See, it's got more I information. Would... It's more accurate. The pacing is way better. The music's way better. And yeah. the art is a lot better. <laughs> Yeah, um, I would. My suggestion would be for someone like, well, like Natai or Chinoda on our podcast, who have both said that they have not watched anything Spice and Wolf related, but want to um, watch this one. Number one, to see if you even like the story, but number two, if you do like it, you're not going to get anything better by going anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unless like, you read the novels. Outside of the fact that I guess the original does go further, so if you care about that, like I want to read further into the story, then I, I guess I suppose go watch the original because that but, technically ends at volume five instead of volume four. But soon that might not be a problem because they have announced that there is a second season already in production. Um, we don't know what yet. We don't know at the time of recording this what um, the release date is scheduled to be. Or, like, the um, number count, if they're going to do 12 or another 25 episodes. Yeah, that's also God, something I have. God, would be awesome a... if they did 25 and they just did, like, volumes the... 5, 6, 7, 8. Just, like, continue the whole 25-episode, four-volume trend. Like, do that. I yeah. like that. It's good I, I like it, too. A question that will have to be answered, though, and it's something that I guess we'll have to wait and see. So, the in the original run of the, the 17 volumes that encompass the Spice and Wolf like story there are more volumes than that in spice and wolf but everything that comes after that is just a very long epilogue um and is not integral to the story um there are three volumes that are side color volumes and these are essentially just collections of short stories that revolve around minor or non-main characters so characters who aren't um lawrence or holo i don't know if they're going to adapt these or not if they do I hope they adapt these as like OVAs or ONAs or movies or some kind of a special thing, because if they try and put these in the middle of the actual anime series, it's going to bring all of the pacing and character building and all of it to a screeching halt. Yeah. So I feel like if they release those as OVAs, a series of OVAs, that'd be fine. Yeah. Like, you know, four, yeah. four episodes per volume or whatever. Or even if they just do, OVA. like, three short films, I don't know. Or maybe just because cause they are short stories. Like, you could probably tell most of the stories that are in here. They're collections of short stories. And I feel like you could tell most of these in, like, between 15 to 25 minutes. So if you just release them as their own separate episodes, that could work, too. Just yeah. separate from the main series. I don't know. At this point, I, know I just want a full adaptation of Spice and Wolf. <laughs> like, I do too. That's all I've given me too much. I, I want. I want more now. Like I was, passion. That's all I've ever wanted. Thank you so much. <laughs> Can I just say, like, how weird it is living, being an anime fan now, and especially seeing so many remakes being done for series I love. Like, earlier this year, we got a completion of um, David Productions' remake of Urusei Yatsura. Um, this season, the, the fall 2024 season that's just started um, at the time we're recording this, we're getting a remake of Ranma One Half being done by MAPPA. Um, those poor animators. <laughs> they, will not, they will not stop slave driving them, I swear to God. Um, and now we got Spice and Wolf that's also come out this year. It just made me wonder, like, what are some other really good anime that not enough people today probably know about or have seen? Maybe because, number one, they're so old, but number two, because they're just not streaming anywhere um, that need this kind of treatment. Buy a studio that knows what they're doing and will give it the love and care it deserves. But it's weird being an anime fan now because I never thought we'd have this kind of a thing going on. <laughs> Bro, we got a Spice and Wolf remake before we got a season two for No Game No Life. <laughs> God damn it, I knew you were gonna bring that up. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> we're never getting a season two. We got a movie. The movie was pretty good. I like the movie. I just remember when that movie came out, Riker was like, You just watch, they're gonna put an announcement for season two at the end of the movie. Like, <laughs> and here we are eight years later. <laughs> radio silence. Absolute radio fucking silence. At this point, Madhouse is just going to announce a remake of No Game No Life. <laughs> Honestly, at this point, they should because it's been long enough to where it's like a second season wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. 
I don't know. Um, it's a very interesting time for anime, though, with with stuff like this coming out. Um, I'm, I'm shocked that it ever happened at all, um, but I am very pleasantly um, surprised by how well it was done, how lovingly it was crafted. Um, I think it's a... It feels like an anime that was made for fans by fans. I mean, to me, I feel like Spice and Wolf remake is like it's a contender for like anime of the year. It is opinion. genuinely, it is genuinely. I know there's like a lot of people. Of the year. There's, I know there's a lot of people that have not been talking about this in terms of like anime of the year, but for me, it's up there for me because the story is just so good and how well paced it is and the music. Like, there's more to an anime other than the freaking the sakuga you know like it's not just about pretty lines moving around on a screen it's not just about the jangling keys to keep your attention that's right you jjk fans yeah (laughs) fucking (laughs) mha fans uh but yeah it's man i I, do we even have to ask at this point john what do we give it out of 10 i think you and i both have the same score 10 out of 10 dude like absolutely I, I have nothing bad to say about this remake. Like, Do you know what I this had... has actually made me do, though? Because I did give this a 10 out of 10 on Mal. It actually made me go back to the original series because I had them both at 10 out of 10s both seasons. I gave them 9 out of 10s. Yeah, I, I'd have to bump down my evaluation of the original now that we have a remake to compare it to. Like, I don't even think yeah. the original I, I ranked, like, 10 out of 10. I, I think I ranked it 9 out of 10, so I'm going to keep it like that. But, yeah, yeah like, this... Oh, it's, everything about it is perfect. There's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. I have no complaints. Yeah. Like, at, like I, I wish I, I had something to like. I, I wish I couldn't just glaze the fuck out of this show. Because <laughs> while we were watching it, I was just like, all right, I, I'm trying to objectively review Spice and Wolf. You're trying because, to find something wrong with it. You're desperately trying to find something wrong with it. Well, I know because you. I, it's, it's because you're already a fan of the series. Of course, we're gonna think it's pretty great yeah. but if i was not a fan of the series if i've never seen spice and wolf would i really think that it was a perfect anime and mm. i honestly was like you know what if i never knew about spice and wolf like ever and i watched this remake i can guarantee you i'd probably go read the light novel yeah so to me that's why i gave it a 10 out of 10 evaluation one it's a great adaptation uh, it's paced really well i like that it was only four volumes and two, it did its job. It made me want to go read the source material, and I'd buy all of it and read all of it. Yeah. If the writing is just as good as in the um, light novel as it is in the anime, I will read this. Yeah. Um, the only thing, and I had to really stretch to find this criticism, John. The only thing I can criticize this for is its very occasional use of some janky CGI. And it is very occasional. See... I, I can't even hold that against it because I it's can't not either. like it's not like a mainstay, you know, like it's different if it's like Chainsaw Man where they have a bunch of yeah. combat sequences in CGI. If that looks jank and it's like a mainstay of the series, like the, all the combat, yeah, that's bad. But yeah. it's like sure the horses look bad, they're CGI and there's like CGI people sometimes, but who cares? That's not part of the story. Yeah. That's just background. No one cares all about those that. transformation scenes are CGI, but it's like who cares? Yeah, it's not a mainstay of the series. Yeah, like, it's like the, it is the only criticism I can really lob at this, and it is a very minor nitpicky criticism. Yeah, like that's why I, I wouldn't even criticize it over it. It's like to me, it's not even worthwhile mentioning. Not like, to sound cares? clickbaity, but have we found the perfect anime? <laughs> <laughs> that's the title now. The perfect anime. <laughs> the perfect anime adaptation. <laughs> Spice and Wolf. Uh, I guess I. I Again, very minor nitpicky criticism. The title, like the full title of this remake, is a little wordy. <laughs> Merchant okay, meets Spice and Wolf. Merchant meets the literally, wise wolf. I'm going to keep calling it Spice and Wolf remake. I don't give two me shits too. what the title is. It's just, it's Spice I mean, and Wolf remake because it me was the first Every, version. Everyone in the fan base is just calling it that, or just Spice and Wolf 2024. Yeah, like. <laughs> um. But yeah, it's like it's so difficult for me to even find anything about this to criticize, and it's very rare that I come across any kind of even anime that I love. Uh, yeah. That I I like again, Mashoku Tensei. Like, love it, but there's definitely things I could criticize about it. Yeah. Uh, Just like uh, you know, I love Overlord. 
bunch well, of shit I can criticize about the anime. There's a lot to criticize lot about to Overlord's criticize anime. About anime. Now, you know, <laughs> Overlord's Overlord's light novels not so much. <laughs> I have criticisms of the light novel too. Fair enough, but not as many as the anime. <laughs> no, not nearly as many. As the anime. <laughs> I still really like Overlord. Um, that remains to be. I I hope it doesn't end like shit. Like the web novel uh, was intended to end. Bro, the only thing I can say at this point regarding Madhouse is you're you're doing a second season of Free Run. Please don't fuck this up. Yeah. Um, you literally made one of the greatest, probably the greatest anime of all time. Don't fuck this up in the second literally season. Literally anime of the year of 2023 with Free Run. And it's just like... Real, actually, come to think of it, Free Run ended this year. So really, it's a contender for anime of the year 2024 as well. Oh, it did end this year, didn't it? Yeah. Does it qualify for anime of the year for our uh, Fennies? I mean, for our for the award show we used to do, I mean, yeah, it would. I don't remember what the criteria is. I'm not sure. The did criteria we ever was, write down the, the criteria ever yes, again? Yes, we did, as a matter of fact. The criteria was it had to end in the year previous. Oh, okay. It could begin, it be, it could begin before that, but it had to end in that particular year. I see. <clears throat> but that that was always the, the like bane of contention with anime that started in the fall, but were like two core long. It's like, God, we can't actually nominate this for anything because it's not over yet. <laughs> Yeah, as long as it ends. But yeah, there. I mean, like I'm with you though. This is definitely a strong contender for me for anime of the year, right up there with Free Run. Well, because it's just so personal. Because we like it. <laughs> it's been around yeah. longer than Free Run, but but I, uh, even the, even like... me. So even but I tried. I tried so hard, and I I think I did. I took off the rose and nostalgia glasses, and I just tried to evaluate it as its own thing. And I came to the conclusion that if I had never heard of Spice and Wolf, I would still feel this way about the show. I honestly, it's hard to say that it's hard to remove our biases. It really is. But yeah. I really tried to remove it as much as possible because there's even when just comparing it to the original, like the original anime, it's leagues mm -hmm. better. Leagues better. Yeah. Everything yeah. is better. In, in almost every way art, animation, uh, music, God, the music. Um, <laughs> I can't, I can't, listen, I cannot <laughs> praise Kevin Pinkin's score of this anymore because, like, it's so good. Also, I, oh, we didn't even talk about this. The fucking, the coral stuff that comes in when Holo's transformed into her wolf form. Mm. Oh my god, it's so good! <laughs> the, like, three times? The music during the it? festival stuff? Oh, right, it's yeah, so, yeah. that music is so good! Ugh. Oh God, I love this anime. It's ten out of ten. Go watch <laughs> it. If you've somehow, if you've somehow gotten this far and not seen it, go fucking watch it. Please go watch it. That's it. That's all. I think that's all we got, John. Yep, that's all I got. Perfect anime. Literally the perfect anime. We have found. We have found the perfect anime adaptation ever. Ever. It'll never get better. Well, maybe free run. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't <laughs> I read know, the source. I, I have to. Go I haven't read the source material, first. so I don't know. It's a great anime. It's it's a phenomenal anime, but I don't know if it's a great adaptation of the source material. I assume it is because people who have read the source material say it is. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for um, our spoiler cast for uh, Spice and Wolf. Thank you, everyone, for uh, dropping in to watch us. Please do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff if you like what you saw and want to see more. I also do want to say thank you uh, for everyone who uh, watched our... Um, the tribute that we put together for uh, Ame's graduation um, that ended up becoming one of our most watched videos ever and most liked uh, videos that we've ever put out. So thank you all for uh, enjoying that and letting us know. Um, also check down below where you can find links to Anime Club After Dark on all the places we upload stuff as well as a link to our merch store where you can buy Anime Club After Dark merch if you want to support us that way. With all that being said, I have been your host, Alex, and we will see you next time. Say goodnight, John. Good night. You know, didn't they bring Holo as a a VTuber as well? Yes, uh, throughout the thing? run of the throughout the run of the the anime, they had like I think it was like four or five videos that she put out as a VTuber. Is great. Yeah, had <laughs> like, Holo's yeah, I was like, voice I actor and everything. Something about that. <laughs> this, is, this is great. Also, speaking of VTubers, uh, congrats to my girl Crony for passing a million subscribers on YouTube. Wow. <laughs> nice, clock. <laughs> nice clock. Nice <laughs> clock. Nice <laughs> clock. Yeah. <laughs>